this. All right. So let me write it. So mutual information is non-negative. This is just by definition, right? Just by definition. So having said this, can we say that h of x minus h of x given y is greater than y equal to 0, right? And then from here, we can say h of x right? So number one. Okay? Mm. Thank you. Just, this is just to check if uh, you are sleeping or not. Okay? <laughs> All right, so that's uh, what it is. So, what does this, uh, from this, what can you tell about entropy? So, if you do, uh, if you are measuring the uncertainty of a random variable, right? when you have a conditioning, it reduces entropy. Okay? If it is exactly equal, this measure is equal to zero. If they are independent, if they are independent, this is just equal to h of x, right? h of x. In such a case, it is equal. If it is independent, x and y independent, Knowing y cannot tell anything about x, so there is no reduction in uncertainty of x. That's what it is. Okay? If they have some uh, say, knowing y has something to do with uh, x, right? Just like our problem, a uh, homework zero problem, right? We have a, a random variable u is equal to theta plus. Uh, some, uh, what was the <laughs> E1 random variable, right? In such a case, knowing uh, U can tell something about data, right? When noise is very small, very much. When noise is very large, little, right? That's what it is, okay? This, this is very important, actually. Yeah, and uh, this, this, these things get uh, even more interesting when we get to the channel coding theorem. Really, 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 really exciting and interesting problems are there. Okay? Uh, so pay attention. Okay? And uh, having said that, and uh, there is a Venn diagram that Kawa and Thomas use, uses, but uh, you, you, you don't have to pay too much attention to this, right? because it is not about sets. Venn diagram is about sets. But uh, as you have seen, these are numbers, right? Numbers. Uh, numbers cannot, you know, it's not a good idea to represent as a Venn. But our textbook has it, so I have it here. So basically, mutual information between x and y, uh, entropy of x minus en entropy of x given y, entropy of y, entropy of y given x, okay? So, and the uh, mutual information can be written as entropy of x plus entropy of y minus joint uh, entropy. Okay, if you, if you do this, what is that one? Entropy of x plus entropy of y given x, right? So entropy of x cancels with each other, front and back. Then what's left is uh, this one, okay? So in pictorially, you can draw something like that, but not very intuitive. So just uh, remember this part for sure, okay? All right, that's that. Now, conditioning reduces entropy. This one I have covered right here by asking you a little uh, you know, early, right? So conditioning reduces entropy. So now this one. That is a conditioned one. This is unconditioned one. Unconditioned one should be larger, right? Or equal to that. 
when do you have equality? If and only if x and y are independent. Okay? Why we have a if and only if? Because we have already proved it. Right? Mutual information is equal to zero if and only if x and y are independent. Okay? That was what we have proved already. <clears throat> All right, that's that. Now, chain rule we can apply. Chain rule. So, you have a series of random variables x1, x2, xn, drawn from um, distribution p. Uh, then, <coughs> mutual info, uh, no, no, uh, joint entropy between xn, x1, and x2 can be written this way x1 first, and then entropy of x2 given x1. Okay? And then if you have a 3, uh, just apply one more time uh, for this part, then you have entropy of H1, x1, entropy of x2 given x1, entropy of x3 given x1 and x2. So uh, uh, one is given the uncertainty on the other one, the correlated part taken away. And uh, do the same with uh, uh, x3. In this particular case, given the first two. So that's the uh, joint entropy. <clears throat> and then we can uh, proceed this further for larger n, but the story is the same. So we call this chain rule. Okay. And the uh, mm, result, results in previous page lead to this, okay? Uh, entropy of joint distribution, uh, uh, you know, entropy of uh, x1 through xn is uh, smaller than y equal to sum of uh, entropy of xi. Why is that? Now this is another <laughs> question to see if you are following me. Can you, what, why can you, we say this? Chain rule. Chain rule. Yeah, chain rule. Chain rule. Uh, so you, if, you, if you use chain rule for this one, then you have all these conditional entropies, right? So let's go back to one page. So all these conditional entropies, right? What can you say about these uh, for particular uh, conditional entropy, which is this one? H of x2, great. Which one is greater? Which one is greater? Uh, H of x2 given x1 versus H of x2. Is it greater, right? How about this one? H of x3 is greater than this particular term, right? right? So H of x1 plus H of x2, H of x3, if we compare these three terms with uh, these conditional terms, individual entropy summation is greater, right? So that's what happens right here, next page, right here, right? Uh, unconditioned one, right? Conditioning reduces entropy. So without reducing the entropy, uh, if you take the summation, this one is uh, greater than this one, right? When do you have equality now? In, uh, all these xi's are independent with each other. Then conditioning doesn't matter, right? So in, in such a case, equality, exactly, okay? And uh, this is uh, if and only. All right, so that's that. Now move on, move on to the next page. Now we can, t uh, we are now ready to talk about conditional mutual information. So this type of design is very useful when you design cryptography system and uh, uh, medium access channel capacity theorem. When we prove this one, this type of thing is uh, important. Like a MIMO antenna, you send uh, two information uh, two independent stream of uh, information from one antenna to the other. And when, when we talk about the capacity of this channel, this type of thing is very useful. So, <coughs> so, uh, 
So uh, when we go to uh, like a chapter uh, 14, this becomes very useful. And then <laughs> there are the problem is even more interesting. Really, really important problems are dealt with there. Uh, still applies to modern uh, information theory and the cryptography, uh, media access channel, uh, all, all type of mathematical problems can be dealt with this one. So anyway, so mutual information between X and Y given Z. Okay, that's what it is. Okay. So for example, Z can be some uh, secret key. And then you can uh, cryptographic system uh, that when you try to uh, design a, a code, uh, uh, you know, the encryption code or decryption code, basically uh, this type of uh, measure is very useful there. Uh, probably I will, I'll try to find a, a time to talk about uh, modern uh, post-quantum secure cryptography as uh, we move on, okay, as an example of uh, applying this type of theory, okay? So, uh, uh, so uh, this one, uh, using the definition so far, I can say this. Is, is, is this right or wrong? <laughs> Remember, I have a typos, right? So, so this one is h of x given z, h of x given y and z, right? So please, uh, Update your note, right? So, <laughs> yeah, so this is wrong, right? H of X minus H of Y, that's wrong, right? H of X given uh, Y and Z, okay? So, how about this one? Is this wrong as well? This one is okay. <laughs> yeah, this one is okay. So, product distribution between X and Y and uh, z is given, right? And the uh, product distribution given z. Okay? And then what is this expectation about? Joint distribution, okay? So joint uh, between what? X, Y, Z. Three of them, okay? Because uh, we have this uh, X, Y, Z, all of them are random variable, each with a distribution. Right? And then we, uh, in this notation here, so uh, Carver uh, was uh, trying to careful. Uh, basically, he, he used this type of notation in order to make it exact, right? So this expectation is over, over this distribution. That's what he's saying. And then he write, this argument. You can do the same. So right here, expectation. We do respect to this distribution. That's what you are averaging, right? Using this uh, distribution. So uh, this one averaged over this distribution. That's what the definition of this notation, okay? All right, now, can we say this? Mutual information between x, y given z equal to zero if and only if x and y independent given z. So there is just a definition that if uh, the top part is equal to the bottom part for all realization of x, y, and z, then these two distribution are independent with each other, okay? So uh, this is the same song and dance, okay? So you can apply that. Now chain rule for information, chain rule for information. Instead of having uh, one random variable here in front of this semi semicolon, right? Semicolon is the notation differentiating between the first part and the Second part, okay? Mutual information needs two arguments, right? First part, second part, right? So in this notation, this whole thing together is the first part. And then 
what comes next after the semicolon is the second part. So this is the mutual between the first part and the second part. So this whole thing is the first part. So we need to do distribution over the whole thing, which is joint distribution over the whole thing. And then product distribution, be careful here. First part is all three jointly. So pro, uh, distribution of x1, x2, x3 jointly versus py, okay? So that's the product distribution, product between the first and the second part, py, okay? And the expectation, okay? So expectation here is for what? All these four random variables, okay? Uh, so you can write this as, since this is a three tuple random variables, you can treat this as a, I'm going to define my first part to be a vector of a random variable, which is x1, x2, x3, right? You can do that, okay? Then basically you can say that mutual information between x on the bar, which is a vector, with a y. You can do that, okay? Mutual information between a matrix and the uh, random variable y. What mutual information between x vector and y vector as well, right? Matrix, matrix, whatever, you know? So in general, you can do that. Uh, basically, um, that is just a notation. What matters is the distribution, right? Okay, so expectation of this uh, ra uh, log ratio. And then if you apply uh, what we have uh, uh, adopted so far, then this is the entropy of the first part, which is h of x minus h of x given y, okay? Where x stands for these three things jointly, okay? And then applying the chain rule of uh, entropy, I can write the joint uh, entropy as h of x1 plus h of x2 given x1, h of x3 given x1 and x2 for this part. And then for the other part, it's the uh, same thing with the conditioning. So it is uh, h of x1 given y, uh, h of x2, x1 and y, and so on. Then uh, grouping this uh, first one with uh, this uh, first one in the second line, what is these two together? h of x1 minus h of x1 given y. Aha, that's some mutual information between x1 and y. Okay, And then grouping that one with uh, this one. Aha, that is uh, mutual information between x2 and y given x1. Okay, so that's this one. And uh, this part right here, together with that part, oh ho, that is uh, mutual information between x3 and y given x1 and x2. Okay, so, aha, uh -huh. this uh, uh, mutual information can be broken down into three uh, summations, each input and the uh, y, and then uh, if you uh, 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 you know write down the first random variable, if you taken care of the first random variable, then all you have to do is the conditioning in, uh, in for the rest uh, of the summation. So uh, mutual information between x1 x1 and y, mutual information between x2 and y, given x1 x3 and y given x1 and x2 and so on. So this, this is just a consequence of applying chain rule of uh, entropy and mutual information. So once you have applied it, this complex one becomes uh, simple terms, <coughs> simpler terms, okay? 
And uh, that's it. So this one you just need to get familiar with. Right? Now uh, we have a very serious <laughs> one, uh, which is the another heavy one. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't think I have enough time for today. So I will do it next time. Since uh, this part is very complex, I will tell you the story first. And then I want you to take a look at the uh, video lecture that I have posted before coming to the class so that I don't have to write heavy <laughs> uh, uh, derivation on the board. Mo the, the, uh, these are the most uh, you know, uh, time consuming, uh, complex part to prove. But uh, uh, this one is very important because uh, what we need to do is optimization of communication system, code designs, and so on. And uh, we talked about motivation of this uh, class. Basically, we have to uh, uh, normalize. We have to apply the same amount of resource, SNR, and so on. So in order to do that, we need to have optimization done. When you apply, want to optimi uh, optimize these measures, basically, uh, if this measure is a concave function or a convex function, proving that is very important. So if you have a, a convex function or a concave function, let's say con convex function like that, you start at a certain point, right? find the slope of this point, and then you move a, a certain step size, and then you come right here at this point, and then you measure this again, and then find out the slope again, and then you go down. So you go down the hill, and, and then uh, if you reduce the step size, basically you go, uh, come back and forth, and then finally you reach the, as you reduce the step size, you reach the you know, optimization point, right? If it is a convex function, if you have a function like that, non-convex function, there is a local maxima. You can trap right here, and then you cannot move uh, uh, you know, uh, um, any further toward the uh, global minimum point. But if it is a convex function, then any gradient search algorithm will find the minimum point. right? So that's why it is uh, important to uh, prove that these measures are convex, right? Or concave. Concave, then you are trying to find the uh, uh, apex point, point, right? But if there is a global apex point and uh, there is no local maximas, then you can run the gradient to search algorithm and then you can find the maximum point, right? So uh, that's why this type of proof uh, is very important, okay? And then once you have proven this, then we can show that. Uh, so the uh, entropy is a concave function. So oh, then so it's easy uh, optimization. I can do it, right? I can start at any point, run the gradient search algorithm, and then we will go to the max, uh, maximum or minimum point, right? So that's that's what it is. Uh, so this type of a statement is very important. Relative entropy, we said it is a non-negative number, right? And then re reaches zero when p is exactly equal to q. But can we say that this relative entropy is convex over a vector of input, p and q? p and q are vector, right? Because it is a distribution. p is a distribution, q is a distribution. So this relative entropy takes two vectors as an input. Right? And then we want to show that this measure is convex over this input. Right? So this is a, a, a very difficult to prove in general, but uh, we will do that next time. Once we have done that, then we can do all the optimizations. So le let me move to the... And the concavity of uh, entropy falls right through it. After you have approved uh, this one is convex between P and U, then 
minus of convex function is concave function, right? So it's, uh, entropy is a concave function. And uh, the concavity of uh, entropy uh, in another approach. And then this one is also very important. Concavity of x and y over the input distribution, Px, so that you can choose your transmission signals, right, over a channel where the channel is given as Py given x. Py given x is what? Y is an observation, x is a transmitted symbol, noise is, is added to the transmitted symbol, that's what you receive, right? So this one is describing the channel. I send to x, if there is no noise added to it, y is, is, is exactly equal to x. But since there is some added, uh, added noise to it, right? y is not in general exactly equal to x. So this py given x describes the channel. Okay? So this one is, if I wanted to maximize the mutual information or the channel capacity over a noisy channel, I need to have a means to optimize this by controlling the transmission uh, probability, the probability of uh, certain signals or symbols, which is uh, 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 described as a P of X, okay? So maximize the mutual information over the channel by controlling the input distribution, right? Given a certain channel, P, Y given X. That's what this one is, so it is very important. So basically, this is the heart of the channel coding theorem, okay? So after you understand this, rest of them will be a little simpler, okay? Uh, chapter, so this is the end of chapter two, and uh, chapter three is a uh, little simpler than this, okay? And uh, after this uh, chapter two and three, things are uh, much more fun, okay? There will be more examples, less abstract, and so on. So try to follow me through chapter two and three, okay? After I have covered chapter two and three, I will have a uh, quiz so that I, I can make sure that you are following me. If you lost with me on chapter two and three, rest of them is not going to be fun, okay? All right, uh, I'll stop right here. All right. By the way, you know,